QuickBooks Online 2024 Customize Report. Get ready because we're going to Bookkeeping Cloud 9 with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time. Reports on the left-hand side. And then within the favorites, we're going to right-click on that balance sheet report. Open in new tab. Right-click on the profit and loss. Open in new tab. Go up to that middle tab we just opened. Close up the hamburger. There's our balance sheet. Let's do a range change up top. Going from 010123 tap 123, that's January to December 2023. Run it to refresh it. Tab into the right, closing the hand boogie, range into the change in 010123 tab 123123, and run it to refresh it. Let's go back on over to the balance sheet. This is where our point of focus has been. And we talked last time about the components of the balance sheet, the comparison between the balance sheet and the income statement between our two major reports. And we talked about some of the formatting items, the formatting and customized items that are in this gray area up top, as well as this header section here. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our trust me i'm an accountant product line yeah it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Now we want to go into the customized settings further into these customized settings. Some of the information in here will be duplicated. And I think the idea from QuickBooks is they had, they're kind of not knowing which how much stuff they want within the customize and how much stuff they want in this ribbon area so some of it is basically duplicated they might change it over time that's why we update the course from time to time so that we have the up-to-date locations of all these little functions but typically the functions will remain the same they might just change exactly the like the formatting and where they are located so let's go into the customization up top we have the customization categories. If I close all of the triangles, we've got the general. We've got the rows and columns. We've got the filters. We've got the headers and footers. Let's start off with the top one, the general information. So we have the periods. Note that this period information is the exact same thing that we saw over here in a prior presentation. Therefore, most likely, you're going to be going into that stuff on this side and not going into the customized reports to get there. And then we got the accounting method. Once again, that was something that was over here as well. So you have that toggle that they put over here now with the uh, accounting method. I'm recommending, remember, to use the accrual method. I went into a big long rant on it last time as to why that's the case. So if, you have, if you're thinking, I want to click over to the cash method over here, just go into my rant before and, and then think about it and see if that uh, is the thing you want to do in the prior presentation. But in any case, we're then going to the number formatting. So this is new stuff. We've got the divide by 1,000 without cents, uh, accept zero amounts, uh, negative numbers, and show in red. So let's go through these one at a time. We're going to say first divide by 1,000. Now, most of the time, small reports or companies might not do this. But if you have a large numbers, then... Uh, dividing by a thousand is a way to take off some zeros to round basically so if we click that one off we're going to say boom and then it rounds it out to uh, the thousand so if I go in to my trusty calculator here and we were to say that we had 1.2 times 1000 that's where that's uh, the amount here so if I go back up top again 
and we say I'm going to go back up top to my customization and then if I bring it back off we were at uh, the 1201 right so it rounds it uh, to the thousands now if I take if I do that here and I say divide by a thousand and we want to have the without sense then it's going to take off the decimal so now it takes off the decimal that wasn't really sense here that was the rounded <laughs> that was the rounded amount here right so you probably you probably possibly want the decimal maybe if you're rounding there but th those are the rounding one now if i bring it back to where we were here's where we were and now i have the pennies here so what if i want to round it to the pennies i just want to take off the pennies i'm not going to divide by a thousand just want to take off the pennies well that's the sense so we don't want sense we want the report to make sense but not have pennies that's what we're talking about so that's a little bit cleaner obviously the question would be is is the financial statement reports are they still uh when you take off or round certain items do you have what you need for decision making purposes usually for external reporting taking off the pennies is fine for the internal reports i like to have the pennies on there because i want to see the exact numbers when i do my data input information so i would usually take off the pennies for external reporting possibly divide if i'm looking with working with large numbers then we have the accept zero amount this is checked off by default and that's probably the way that we want to keep it let's run the report just to see what that is doing if i go down here for example to this truck account you can see it has a parent subsidiary account relationship let's go back to the first tab just to get an idea of what that means if i go into the transactions and then go into my chart of accounts when we set up our accounts we could set them up so that we have a parent type of account and then put other accounts below it so we have this subsidiary relationship that's what's creating that particular drop down when we do that oftentimes we don't want to actually post anything to this truck account but instead just use it to give us the drop down and then post to the accounts below it so you can see that nothing over here is posted to the truck account and it didn't put a zero which is nice because the zero would be a little bit messy right so instead it has the drop down and here's the amount here and then it gives us the total uh below also down below in retained earnings you can see nothing's in retained earnings but it still keeps retained earnings because that's like a permanent account and it doesn't put a, it didn't put a zero there if i go back up top and customize it and then uncheck that one you can see that in this uh subsidiary truck account there it puts the zero which is a little bit ugly right it's not as nice and then it puts it here now if you want to remove the zeros that don't have anything in there remember that was here where you can say i want to have uh n not active accounts that had activity in them but non-zero accounts so that'll remove all the accounts that have zeros in them so so usually if you want to remove the zeros you'll do this and usually by default you'll just keep this one checked off and just don't mess with that one typically so then let's go to the next one we're going to say rows and columns so we have the totals uh the days uh the months and this is all stuff that we saw over here same exact drop down that we had over here it's just repeated show non-zero amounts this is the same exact drop down that i just showed you over here so once again you probably will not go into the rows and columns section because you could do that right at the header of or the ribbon it might be called <laughs> of uh the report let's go into the filters filters is a really important area depending on the reports that we go into oftentimes you're not going to filter say a balance sheet report but you will often use a filter for like a transaction detail report so let's do one of those let's go into like the checking account and you can see this time they're giving us the new report settings so this has the fancy new settings in it so if you filtered this way it, it's right here this is where the filtering option is in this one and then oftentimes if i hit the drop down we oh wait a sec we'll keep that one there because this is already filtering we'll add another filter and then if i hit the drop down we often want to filter by transaction type as we saw before equals and then maybe i want to just take a look at like the deposits right and then i can i can filter and just see those we can add another filter if i add another filter that will then uh reduce it down 
it's not going to show like I can't add another one and give me deposits and expenses. Instead, if you want deposits and expenses or deposits and something else, you can check two of these off as well. Let's say deposits and uh, what a cash expense or something. Then I have two of them checked off. So now I should be able to see both of those items lined up over here. Now, if you go to the classic view, I'm going to switch to the classics view. Now you have the setup that we saw before. And so here's our information in the classic view. And then up top, we can customize the report. And now you've got your filtering options here and this drop down type of setting. So this one's already checked off as the checking account. Once again, we could filter by the transaction type, for example, and then possibly choose one or multiple of these items. Here's a check. And then we could choose a, uh, do, 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 a deposit. So we have two of them checked off and we could say run it. And so now we've got the, the transaction types. So it's still up in the air as to whether uh, QuickBooks is going to run with. You would think uh, soon they're going to run with uh, the modern view, which I think they probably will because it does look kind of nice. I think it works pretty well. Uh, but they still have the classic view on some of the reports, including the balance sheet report. So we'll see how that <laughs> we'll see how that plays out, you know. And if once they finalize it, we'll we'll update the course again at some point, and uh, and we'll we'll see what they did. So they're A/B testing that particular feature right now. It appears. So that's going to be the filtering, uh, and then we have the headers and footers. So if in the headers and footers, we've got the company name, we've got the report title, and those are the items up top. So we saw that you could remove, like we could just remove them here and say, okay, now we don't have a company name and report title. If I, oh, hold on a sec, run it. If I customize it, put those back in, we could change the name, but we could always, we could already do that over here. So if I went in here and I changed the name, I can do that in here. I'm not sure you can delete it in here. Maybe you can delete the whole, yeah, you can. You can even delete the whole thing in here. So you really don't need to go up to that customized area to get to, get to that because you can already do it like on the face here. So uh just note that that's probably the faster way to, to do it uh i'd like to return the title now <laughs> i'll just say company name company name and uh and report balance sheet okay and then the period the report period so let's run that again and then let, let me just show you the page layout and so here's the layout of the report. And if I scroll down, you can see that at the, at the footer, it's got accrual basis and then the date and the time. You might not want all that stuff on the footer. You can't see it unless you go to the print, but when you print it, it'll show when you printed it. Well, actually you can't see it here. It's on the footer there. So what if I wanna remove that? I want it out. I want that out of here. Get that out of here. So report uh, period. Uh, we'll say, take that off. Now, hold on. The report period took off this uh, date on the, on the top. Let me show you that again. The report period is, and I was going to go to these three that take off the footer. The report period takes off this one. I don't even think you were able to do that before because I, I, I believe at some point I, I, we couldn't actually take. So that's kind of nice. That's actually works well because when you run like a report, like if I, if I run this report, let's put it back on and just show you when you might want to use that. If I ran, if I ran this report and I said it, I want it quarter by quarter, then this, it says as of December 31st, but it's not really as of December 31st anymore because you have, it's as of each of these four quarters, right? So, so in that case, you might want to remove this and then rely on these or uh, and rely on these as basically your dates in a essence. It would be nice if you can edit that still, <laughs> but at least you can remove it. That's nice. And then the footers, we can remove the footers down here, date, time, report, basis. And I can say, boom. And then down here, footer gone. If I was to print this thing, then no footer. They can't tell when you printed it. I've got the date up top. You don't need to know when I printed it. You don't need to know the basis because we are, it's an accrual, you know, 
So we'll take that off. And then we can go into the alignment. This is just the alignment of the header. So it's we can go left align and the footer. We can left align it. And then let's say that we want, let's put the footer back in there so we can uh, check it out. So now it's on the left. Footer's on the left. And then if I go boom and say we want it to be centered, that's what it was before. If I want to put it on the right, put it on the right. Now it's on the right. We're doing a, a do si do, turn to the left, turn to the right, and then back to the center, back to the center, and there we have it. So note, uh, pretty pretty uh, nice options overall. If you're used to the desktop version, uh, some things that you might notice is the desktop version has some more options for the font formatting of the font and it had some options for like increase in the size of the text and that kind of stuff, which they haven't done with the online version. I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe, I think maybe it's because if you really wanted to dig, dig into that stuff, you could you can connect this with, uh, with Excel and you can export it to Excel pretty easily and then go crazy with formatting on fonts and what stuff if you wanted to, although it takes more time to do that because those kind of changes you would have to do uh, every time. Uh, the size of the font, we can't change uh, as easily in here, which, which I, maybe I already said that, but you could on the desktop, but you can zoom in for the view. So that's nice. And again, if uh, later on, we'll talk about exporting to Excel, which also gives you a wider expanse of options, has its pros and cons. So we'll look at that, maybe not next time, but we'll look at that at some point.